Diabolical Tales. Starring Jack Ferguson and another exciting story of dangerous intrigue, fantastic adventure, and sinister circumstance. Diabolical Tales. Many of the incidents in the story you are about to hear are based on the actual experiences and authentic records of NSA Operative 132, who for many years has investigated the men from within the Earth. Here is our star, Jack Ferguson, as Operative 132. My name is not important, but you can call me Operative 132, or just O-132. I work on an above top secret project called Agartha, and this is my story. In a moment, listen for Jack Ferguson as Operative 132, Government Man. But first, a word from our sponsor. For a man like me, there's nothing better than a good cold beer. That's why I drink Von Schlotz Pilsner beer. It's a man's beer. Wait, I like Von Schlotz too. You do? Yes, it's true. Women have discovered the secret of men's supreme satisfaction by enjoying the cool, mellow flavors of Von Schlotz Pilsner beer. And for you ladies who have yet to discover the secret steps, here they are. Step one, pick up a package of Von Schlotz Pilsner beer from your local store. Check. Step two, open a bottle of this fine Pilsner beer and inhale its intoxicating aromas. Mmm, check. Step three, take a nice big taste of its cool, mellow smoothness. Mmm, I love it. Yes, now both man and ma'am can enjoy Von Schlotz Pilsner beer. So men, tell the special ladies in your life to pick up a case of Von Schlotz for just the two of you. Will do. And now, Diabolical Tales. This above top secret report from Project Agartha is marked The Pentagon Incident. You see anything yet, O-132? Not yet, Agent Cooper. Another clue? Another stakeout? Well, that's just the way this works, Agent Cooper. The date was Friday, October 2nd, 1953. My partner, Agent Cooper, and I had followed a man named Giovanni Mariano as he drove to an apparent meeting in a warehouse in the industrial district. Mr. Mariano is a motel owner and now a suspect in our investigation after he started acting suspiciously a few weeks ago. Suspicious like he wasn't himself. Suspicious like he was working on behalf of the men from within the earth. The how, why, and when, we don't know, yet. Now we were just waiting to see if someone turned up to meet with Mr. Mariano. A 1949 Mercury Coupe drove past us and pulled up next to Mariano's parked car. A man in a black fedora and trench coat climbed out. He glanced around, apparently not noticing us before slowly walking toward the back door of the warehouse. Okay, who's this guy? That's not Xanth. I don't know, but there's something familiar about him. And as the man closed the warehouse door behind him, I remembered. All right, I saw this man at the Avalon Motel a few weeks ago. Same fedora, same Mercury Coupe. He left right before I noticed Mariano acting strangely. We should go I'm gonna go in. What I want you to do is stand watch. If I'm not back in 20 minutes, just wait longer. All right. I made my way up to the back door of the warehouse. It appeared to be unlocked. With one hand on my standard issue M1911 sidearm, I slowly pushed open the door. Inside there was a hallway. I could hear some murmuring voices coming from an open door down at the end of the hall. 
So I carefully made my way toward it, leaning against the wall. And as I approached the door, I could see the man in the black fedora standing in the room with Mr. Mariano. They will expect more from you in the future, Zivor. We will succeed, of course. Master Sadden needs you to get word to Xanth immediately. He is to stand down on his attack against the home of the surface dweller called General Burton. Xanth is attacking General Burton's home? We still don't know where General Burton lives. The address we had listed turns out to be the Pentagon. The Pentagon? That is the surface dweller's military headquarters, Zills. Which is why we need you to tell Xanth to stand down. We don't think he is aware. What about the surface dwellers? Operative 132 and Agent Cooper. Xanth has already sent a sample of Operative 132's deoxyribonucleic acid to the core. We do not have a sample from Agent Cooper. It was lost with Zong. So we need Operative 132 alive for now. But his sidekick is expendable. Xanth already knows this. Understood, Zeus. They were coming near. I backed away from the door and tightened my grip on my M1911 sidearm. I will go out first. I need to make contact with Master Sun. I edged around into another open door and watched as this man in a black trench coat and fedora, apparently named Zills, walked toward the door. He turned around briefly and I could make out that he had black sunglasses. I waited for a moment and then slunk out into the hallway. After I heard the Mercury Coupe start up, I carefully opened the door to see Zills driving away. I quickly walked back to our waiting car. What happened to 132? Did you get the plates on that Mercury Coupe? Yeah. All right, his name is Zills. We'll deal with him soon enough. Mariano's real name is Zivor, and he's supposed to go meet up with Xanth. Oh, criminy. How many names can they possibly have that start with a Z? Apparently enough for an entire civilization, Agent Cooper. Mariano was starting up his own car, so we ducked as he pulled a U-turn and drove past us. After a few seconds, we turned around and started following him. Meanwhile, I was trying to get Agent Cooper up to speed on what I overheard. They were saying something about a die... something nucleic acid sample from me. They didn't have a sample from you as it was lost with Zong. So that tells me, when they use their electro incinerators to stun, they also collect some kind of biometric sample of the victim or something. Dinucleic acid? I, I don't have any dinucleic acid in me. I don't know, but it makes sense somehow. And when I encountered Xanth in the automat last summer, he said they wanted me alive. And that's when he stunned me. Did they say they needed me alive too? Nah, they said you were expendable. Well, they're expendable too. All this tells me is that they're saving something else for me. But they can kill you, incapacitate you, and now copy your, uh, genetics. I gotta stop them. It's a measure of national defense. We followed Mariano for several miles before realizing he was turning out towards the countryside of Maryland. There weren't many other cars out here, and we'd been on him for approaching 40 minutes. I started to back off a little, and noticed he also slowed down, and then turned off into a dirt road leading into an apple orchard. He dropped out of view. Where's he going? Do we follow him? I'm gonna drive by slowly. As we approached the dirt road, I could see Mariano had parked his car and was opening the door. He climbed out and turned toward us. He closed his car door and took a few steps toward the road. He sees us, 0132. Yep. Okay. I got this. Just watch him. Affirmative, 0132. Both Agent Cooper and I climbed out of the car and started walking towards Mariano. When we were about 20 feet out, he spoke. 
Mr. Maplethorpe? From the motel? Why are you following me? It's time to drop the front, Benny. Why do you keep calling me Benny? You're not Giovanni Mariano, you're Zivor, an imposter from within the Earth. You're not Mr. Maplethorpe's surface dweller. You're Operative 132. I want to know what you've done with the real Mr. Mariano. I want to know what you people are doing around Amalgamated Technologies. And I want to know what this plan to attack the Pentagon is all about, Benny. Stop calling me Benny. I kill you. He pulled an electro incinerator out of his back pocket and was wildly waving the thing at us. Both Agent Cooper and I pulled out our standard issue sidearms at the ready. Drop your weapon, man in black. You can't kill Agent Cooper here. And Zill said you weren't supposed to kill me. And this seemed to change something in his expression. He knew he was caught. And I was already beside myself with excitement to finally cut one. Drop your weapon. We're not going to ask you again, man in black. He suddenly turned his electro incinerator away from us and turned it toward his own head. You stay away from my family, surface dwellers. Understand? Wait! <laughs> He did it. The electro incinerator dropped to the ground where he stood. And any chance we had of proving this just turned to dust. Damn. Oh, well. Huh. Get that uh, doohickey. But 0132, what about Xanth at the Pentagon? They can't seriously think they're going to try to do some kind of attack at the Pentagon. You're right, Agent Cooper. Because they're not going to do it. We're going to be there to stop them, and we're going to capture them. We need to prove that the threat posed by the men from within the Earth is a very serious one. Let's go. We'll be back with Operative 132 in Diabolical Tales after a word from our sponsor. Whoa! Watch out, kids! Agent Cooper here, and I need your help to defend democracy, capitalism, and freedom by getting the new Agent Cooper FBI water pistol. When you use one, it's like you've joined an above-top-secret project to put the stops on the men from within the... er... Uh, the communists. Included with each water pistol is an official FBI identity card signed by Director J. Edgar Hoover himself and a special secret letter from yours truly, giving you highly classified instructions for how to use it. The suggested retail price is $2.49, so ask your mom or dad to purchase your very own Agent Cooper FBI water pistol. It's your civic duty. And now we're back with Jack Ferguson as Operative 132 in Diabolical Tales, Project Agartha. There I was, sitting in the parking lot of the Pentagon with my partner FBI agent Cooper, waiting for a supposed attack by the man from within the earth known as Xanth the Feared. We'd been there two hours already. Not that many cars are parked out here. It's after hours, Agent Cooper. Even the United States military has to sleep. Looks like a storm coming in. Sure does. So before Mariano killed himself... Zivor, not Mariano. Okay, sorry. Zivor. Before Zivor killed himself, he warned us to stay away from his family. What do you think he meant? I'd guess he meant what he said, Agent Cooper. But he and his family owned the motel. The guy who died was an imposter. I can't imagine the family has anything to do with it. But you make a good point. Where is the real Mariano? We'll have to check up on the family later. Oh, 132 you see that? I looked in the direction that Agent Cooper was motioning. There was some movement in a patch of darkness between two lampposts. A man emerged from the darkness. He was a giant. It was him. It's him, Xanth. And Xanth was making a beeline for the south parking entrance to the Pentagon. 
Agent Cooper looked at me and pulled out his Smith & Wesson 38 Special. Ready? Let's get him. As we started after the man in black, he was just approaching the entrance to the Pentagon. There were two Marine guards there. We saw them draw their guns, and then... He vaporized both of them and continued on towards the door. Agent Cooper and I both raised our guns and... Our shots missed! But Xanth ignored us and entered the building. Agent Cooper and I tore off into a run after him. We entered the Pentagon to find the main hall empty. There was a dark spot on the wall where I'm pretty sure a guard had been a few moments before. Agent Cooper and I paused, waiting, listening. And we ran off in the direction of the noise. He was ahead of us and causing quite a stir from the sounds of it. We made it through the E and D ring halls and could see burnt, blackened blast marks on the walls and the floor. Evidence of his presence. No! I think he's down there. By now we'd run through the C and B rings and were just coming into the A ring hall when we finally saw him. He had his back to us, but was holding his electro incinerator on four or five military police officers, all with their guns raised and about to fire. What the? Agent Cooper and I had a clear shot, so we... One of our shots hit him in the shoulder. He started turning towards us with his weapon and fired. Get down, Cooper! <laughs> we hit the ground as the blast went over our heads. He turned back and fired on the other MPs. Agent Cooper and I started climbing to our feet as Xanth turned and burst through a pair of doors leading outside into the Pentagon's central courtyard. He's in the courtyard! Hold up, Agent Cooper. I pulled out Z4's electro incinerator. I thought you said you wanted him taken alive. I don't want to use it, but we might have to. He's already taken at least one of our hits. How do you, uh... How do you, uh... Wait, uh, um... I'm going to go around to the right. All right, Agent Cooper. I'll take the left. Watch yourself. You too, 0132. I wandered down the sidewalk with my Garthen weapon in my left hand, my M1911 in my right. The courtyard is bigger than it looks in pictures. Nearly five acres of land with benches, trees, sidewalks, and landscaping. Lots of places for somebody to hide. I was already drenched from the rain, and my glasses kept fogging up, so I took them off. And then I heard some noise behind me. Turned around to see some more military police and other agents running out the door into the courtyard and ready for action. I signaled to get their attention. Most of them stood down, started fanning out. A chill went down my spine. Drop your weapons, service dwellers! I glanced to my right and saw Agent Cooper emerge from some bushes. He had his hands up. Santh was behind him, holding him around his neck with his electro incinerator pointed at Agent Cooper's head. Don't listen to him! Shoot him! Shoot him, service dweller! A group of a dozen or so MPs and agents closed in. Everybody was bearing down on Sanf. He started backing away, pulling Agent Cooper with him, using him as a shield. Let him go, man in black! There's no way out of here! I don't tend to survive! Take me to your General Burton! Or I will kill this little sidekick, surface dweller! Little sidekick? I will kill him now! I said, drop your weapons, Operative 132! Oh no. I suddenly realized that there was no way that Xanth was leaving this courtyard without taking somebody with him. Right now, that somebody was Agent Cooper. And a crash of memories came flooding back of all the men I've lost over the years. And, and I panicked. I couldn't let Xanth kill this good man. I couldn't let him kill my friend. So, I dropped both the Electro Incinerator and my M1911 sidearm to the ground and put my hands up. All right, all right. Everybody, put your guns down. Put them down, now. No, take the shot, shoot him. Some of the MPs lowered their weapons, but others did not. Xanth kept on moving. Backing away as I kept pressing forward with my hands up, the group falling in behind me. I said, take me to your General Burton! Okay, 
but you gotta let him go, now. Shoot him! Shoot him now! We don't have a shot! We'll hit you! I don't care! Shoot him! And then I saw Agent Cooper put all his weight into elbowing Xanth in the gut. Oh. It was just enough to have him release him for a split second and... <laughs> Both Agent Cooper and I dropped to the ground just in time. Oh. I looked up from the ground to see... A young woman in a tan trench coat holding the fallen electro incinerator. She had taken the shot. I, I climbed on my feet and checked on my partner. You okay? Why'd you drop your gun, O-132? You could have taken him. Because my friend was in danger, and I didn't want to lose him. But I'm just SC-4. Probably not for too much longer, Agent Cooper. A black man in a gray trench coat approached us from the crowd. You guys all right? Yeah. Who's the lady? That's my partner, Agent Young, CIA. Agent? Agent? I'm Agent Nicholson, FBI. Y you're an agent too? Yeah. Like I said, FBI. Huh. All right, Agent Nicholson. The lady approached us and handed over the electro incinerator. Nice shot, Miss... Thanks. My name is Agent Young. Agent Young, huh? I've never met a G-woman before. First time for everything. Today I killed some chump with a box of lightning. Looks like we got here just in time. What agency are you guys with? So we exchanged badges and wallets for a moment. Sure enough, this Agent Young worked for the CIA. Turned out she and Agent Nicholson were assigned to search for a possible communist mole working within the Pentagon. So, we were pretty sure our target was in the building. At least he was. Until that massive guy who was dressed in black came in here with his ray guns. Suspect Ivan got away again. Suspect Ivan? You mean, he's your communist mole? We've been trailing him for almost two years. Well, looks like we might have more to talk about, Agent Nicholson. And, uh, miss? You can just call me Agent Young. It's gonna take me a while to get used to calling you that, Agent Young. The next morning, Agent Cooper and I were finishing up our reports from the previous night's activities in his office at FBI headquarters. We checked the plates of the 1949 Mercury Coupe that Zills had used. Turns out it was a rented car that was returned that morning, paid for by a man who gave them John Doe as a name. So with Xanth dead and no leads on where this Zills might be, we were about to head over to Amalgamated Technologies to try to question James Moore, CEO, when we received an unexpected phone call. Cooper here. Oh, hello, sir. Yes, he's here. Thank you, sir. It's good to finally talk to you as well. I'm honored to be a part of this project, and I won't let you down, General. Here he is. General Burton for you, O-132. General Burton calling right now could only mean one thing. After this attack at the Pentagon, he was finally going to heed my warnings about the men from within the Earth and militarize Project Agartha. O-132 here, General Burton. Operative 132. Good work last night. Oh, you heard about it already. We were just about to file our reports. I'm calling because I understand you plan to investigate Amalgamated Technologies. Not the company itself, General. James Moore, CEO, is of interest to the project because- Listen up, Operator 132. You're going to stop. Right now. I'm sorry? The government has over $500 million in military contracts with Amalgamated Technologies. They're producing a new jet interceptor for the Air Force, a new tank for the Army, and rockets for our continental defense. James Moore is directly responsible for most of this. So you're going to stop now, Operative 132. Do you understand? Perhaps you'd care to read my report first, General. You were the target in their Pentagon attack. I'll read it and we'll take note. But this investigation will stay focused on the men from within the Earth and not corporate espionage. We've got enough to deal with right now with Joe McCarthy's goons looking through everything we're doing. General, I'm starting to feel like... Just listen, I've got orders for you. In light of recent events, we want you to find two recruits to join your team. In about three months, one of them will be going down there. Going down? You mean to Agartha? That's right. 
that can plant a mole in our government, then we want one in theirs. I'm, uh, not sure. These are your orders of 132. I know you want to militarize this project, but we're not going to do that until we know a hell of a lot more about what these damn things are. And if they hit the Pentagon again before that, if they come after you personally, then we'll take appropriate steps so 132. Now, do you have anyone in mind for these new recruits? I think I know a couple of capable people. So Agent Cooper and I finally had a major success with Project Agartha, only to encounter another roadblock in the next step of our investigation. All I could do was submit the reports and hope that the committee would deem the men from within the Earth a sufficient threat. As if what we'd experienced already wasn't evidence enough. Without official permission to investigate James Moore, CEO of Amalgamated Technologies, all we could do was continue along as we had been, with next to no resources. I guess at least now we'll be getting a couple new members of the team. But one thing's for sure, the men from within the Earth are still out there, and I'll hunt them down to expose and or terminate them. Or I'll die trying. This is Jack Ferguson. Some of the stories we bring you are so strange and fantastic that it's hard to believe that it really happened. For obvious reasons, some of the names, dates, and localities have been changed. But our stories are based on the real-life experiences of Operative 132, G-Man. And they did happen here. We hope you'll join us again next time for another adventure. Until then, remember folks, the men from within the Earth are among us. episode of the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour starred Jack Ferguson, Brian Bedell, Steve DeMonico, Paul Warner, Stuart Moyer, Rihanna McDowell, Bill Stearns Jr., Troy Sterling Neese, Laura Stearns, Brandon Kane, and Don Guerin as Agent Nicholson. The original score was by Troy Sterling Neese. The mix was by Dan Jeremy Brooks of Apocalypse Cow Studios. It was written by Brandon Kane and produced by Christian Wheeler, Troy Sterling Neese, Don Guerin, and Dan Jeremy Brooks. The Diabolical Tales Radio Hour is presented by Cosmic Control Productions. I'm Don Guerin, and I play Agent Nicholson and Master Zun on the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour. While our show is a lot of fun to create, each episode costs a lot of time and money to produce. So if you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour on your preferred medium in order to catch new episodes as they're released. And if you have the means, please consider donating to our show at patreon.com slash diabolicaltales. Patrons will help us continue to produce the show, and we'll also give you access to bonus materials and additional content. You can also find us at diabolicaltales.com. Thank you for listening to the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour. 